This is a talk given by myself in the World Financial Congress earlier this year. Um, the Congress was organised by Mark Meyerson and I'm joined by himself and uh, my colleague Andy Malloy who was chairing the session. I'd like to give a big thanks to uh, Steps to Walk to organising and allowing me to talk on this. I uh, hope you enjoy. Um, so thank you very much um, to Mark um, for asking me to uh, talk on this. Um, I spend most of my uh, time uh, in the trauma side of foot and ankle. So Taylor fractures have become a, a rather common, be it rare in uh, the usual circumstance uh, in my practice. Uh, these are my disclosures, uh, disclosures uh, uh, not uh, currently relevant to what I'm discussing now. So with Taylor fractures, uh, we have this uh, circle, really, of arthritis avian deformity that we are trying to prevent. And be it preventing one, will also have an outcome on the others. And the problem is, is that uh, currently there are no studies greater than level uh, three. Almost all studies that we see are level four and five, although there is an accepted wisdom that we maintain the blood supply, correct deformity, and try to achieve union. So I'll do this by a number of uh, factors. And first of all, it's approach. So this is uh, not recent now. The arterial anatomy of the tail has been known for quite some time. Uh, Prasan's uh, very good work did show, as you can see on this, uh, a um, huge amount of blood supply on the medial side of the talus and relatively uh, little than the lateral side. Uh, this paper uh, by Varney this, work, uh, this year uh, also uh, showed the uh, foramina uh, of the uh, vascular input into the talus. And as you can see on the medial side, not only around where the delta inserts, but all the way down the medial side, you have these uh, small foramina, uh, large foramina going underneath uh, your tail and neck. And on the lateral side, apart from your ATFL insertion, is very little apart from inferiorly. Um, Miller, uh, who was uh, on uh, Prasan's initial paper, um, then done further work in regards to the quantitative assessment, and they found that the uh, posterior tibial artery supplied uh, the zones one, two, and three, uh, be it that your medial blood supply was uh, significant for your Taylor dome. So really, this leaves us with a very uh, a small window on the lateral side, uh, which has a minimal effect on the blood supply to the talus. However, the workhorses for the talus are seen as a medial and lateral side. When you're coming up to the tailor dome, uh, this paper by Alan Clark showed that uh, even with large incisions, as you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, uh, they could only really get to very small areas of the tailor dome. And there's a large section on the middle aspect of the talus that are still uh, unable to be accessed. Salzman's paper back in 2006 uh, showed that if you've done the osteotomies, uh, you still have this inaccessible region in the uh, middle part of the talus. Uh, we developed uh, in our unit uh, the transligamentous approach, um, which uh, is used by a number of uh, units in the UK now. Uh, it has been described previously, um, but we uh, take off ATFL and CFL if we're trying to get the tailor dome and use this um, uh, this uh, uh, incision on the lateral side, but bringing the incision a bit more anterior towards the third metatarsal base rather than the fourth. As you can see, if you put a home on behind, you can leave the talus forward, uh, keeping the medial blood supply uh, unaffected. So going back to uh, uh, Calum Clark's uh, talus where they had the zones, uh, we have found that you can get to uh, this, about, uh, this much of the talus just using the lateral side. And this deep dissection shows that uh, the sleeve of forward can be uh, kept on the, your PTFL. So uh, a case example, uh, this case is already has ATFL and CFL uh, disrupted, as you can see the small fracture of the distal aspect of the fibula. Uh, this is the Taylor body uh, 3D reconstruction. As you can see, it was easily accessed in the uh, ATFL and CFL with then um, return to normal with our screw fixation. It's another such fracture, almost like a log splitter, uh, straight down the middle, an open fracture of the talus. 
and again, uh, easy reduction and fixation through the uh, region of the ATFL, and then the ATFL and CFL was repaired as you would a brostrum. Uh, metalwork is another uh, concept. So we know that um, if you have a tail fracture such as this, if you fix it from uh, front to back, the problem we have if you're using uh, um, compression screws is that its alignment will cause for the, uh, the tail of body to displace uh, superiorly. Uh, such a case as uh, presented in FAI a few years ago. Coming from uh, back to front, uh, this is uh, a lot more of a home run screw. The problem is that the area that you can insert it is a very small area because uh, FHL is here on its the main orthogonal uh, position that you'd like to place the screw. Also, if you uh, you can miss uh, superior as this uh, in this case, as you can see, the screw is ended uh, lateral to the tailors. Biomechanically, uh, the uh, parallel screws uh, front to back, sorry, uh, back to front PA screws are seen as the biomechanically uh, strongest. Uh, but there's been a, a great uh, push uh, for uh, more plate, lock and plate uh, fixations. This is certainly what I do in my practice. Um, the problem is, is that biomechanically, there's uh, no paper to suggest that this is of any benefit. This uh, it was not a lock-in plate, but a uh, non-locking plate fixation on the lateral side, and they found that they could get better reduction of the fractures, but by biomechanically, it was not superior to the uh, posterior to anterior screws. Uh, similarly, uh, this one was the blade plate on the medial side. Obviously, this is a very difficult uh, fixation to occur to try and get down your medial uh, gutter. And another uh, with a two-hole locking plate fixation, as you can see, that they have not attempted to uh, uh, get comminution on the medial side, and therefore this uh, doesn't really hold true in uh, practice. So currently, we don't have any uh, biomechanical evidence or uh, clinical evidence for use of the locking plates as yet. Uh, this is an example from my early days as a consultant, where I fixed it on the medial side. Uh, although I got good anatomical reduction, the issue was impingement medial gutter and I found that uh, doing any medial fixation now in my practice has uh, stopped. Um, as you can see this case I had to remove the metalwork and you had uh, a Boston on the tail and neck which uh, causing quietness contracture. Uh, this is the, my normal practice now, such a case on the lateral side uh, fixation with a small locking plate and a percutaneous screw around the medial column be it a fully threaded screw, not compression, with beetle comminution. Now, this case has gone on to unite. So results-wise, uh, to take us back to the Hawkins initial paper, uh, he, we find that uh, um, his initial description of um, the fractures was very good. However, uh, the way that they treated the fractures at that time uh, were archaic and uh, have moved on significantly. As you can see, the release of the delta ligament was normal practice. The older uh, reviews, uh, such as this one by uh, Metzger, uh, shows that you had a 5% uh, uh, AVN rate in group one, group two, 34%, group three, 78%. But since 2000, we've moved on. And our rates, uh, this uh, paper in 2017 uh, by Jordan, uh, showed that our rates of AVN have uh, significantly decreased at 15%, 38%, 55%. Uh, OA rate uh, is also noted uh, below. I think the average AFS scale, uh, scale is somewhere between uh, high 60s and uh, early, early 80s. Uh, in regards to malunion, they reported on the uh, patients that they could find in the studies that uh, reported malunion 13% and non-union of 4%. Because Taylor body fracture is the review that we've done. Um, the main problem is arthritis, which is up as far as uh, 70 to 80% uh, following fixation. Um, just to report, uh, this is unpublished uh, work, but uh, from three uh, major trauma centers in our uh, region, um, uh, in, uh, in the UK, 
um, with uh, progression of uh, the uh, different treatments, they're now reporting that the AVN rate is down as low as 6% in all comers. Um, yeah, on those severely damaged, a, uh, there's a KISS a series of six of using a ceramic uh, tailless with very good results. Uh, I must say I have not done this in my practice as yet. Uh, so to finish, um, I'd like to say that the treatment is definitely evolving, um, but we need prospective data. All the studies are all retrospective. Uh, updated outcomes are needed. Um, trauma registries, I think, is definitely the way forward. In the UK, we've developed a trauma registry as part of the British Orthopedic Fund Ankle Society to try and uh, keep a um, progressive uh, perspective data on these uh, uncommon injuries. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Lyndon. Fantastic talk um, on a uh, depressingly common fracture these days that we see. Thank <laughs> you.